reference to yet another, uh, yeah, another Matthew. What do you mean? Mr. War, you sound like you're sad. I don't know, it's just, just another math video. But that's exciting. Yes, it's because it's, of course it's exciting. What am I thinking? This is a whole new lesson. This is lesson 4.4. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Look at our title. Divide tens, hundreds, and thousands. I love it! Tell me that isn't what you came here for, my friends. It is. And we also have a purpose. You know that? That's right. I say purpose, not porpoise. Porpoise, we know, is a type of dolphin. Purpose is objective. Why are we doing this lesson? It tells us right there. It says, how can you divide numbers through thousands by whole numbers through ten? Ooh, that just sounds like, oh, chocolate melting in my hands. Give me some M&Ms, something. Oh, my goodness, this is just yummy. We can't do any of this, though. That's the really sad part. If there's any sad part, it's this part. It's just so sad because we can't do anything unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because this is real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now, it says Dustin is packing apples in gift boxes. Each gift box holds four apples. How many boxes can Dustin pack with 120 apples? It says you can divide using basic facts and place value. Okay, let's see. For example, one, it says divide. We have 120 divided by four. Well, step one says identify the basic fact. Ooh, I like that, the basic fact. Yes, it's that little 12 right there. 12 and the four, because 12 divided by four, everybody knows is three. So easy. But does that help us? It does, because when you think about it, step two says use place value. So then 120 is going to be equal to how many tens? Well, that should be 12 tens, right? I mean, the easy way to try to remember this is just think 100 is equal to 10 tens. 100, 10, it's kind of weird to say it this way, 10 tens. That makes up 100. Well, and then we also have two tens in the actual problem because we have 12. So we have the twos in the tens place. So it just means what's 10 plus two? 12. 12 tens. Get it? Ah, okay, I'm just kidding. This is so exciting. Yes, yeah, step three divide. Okay, so now we're doing the division part. We have 12 tens divided by four is equal to then three tens. Too easy. Yep. So 12 tens divided by four is equal to three tens, which is equal to 30 because three tens again is like 10, 10, 10. And look what they did there. They're just showing you that was just a power of 10. So 12 divided by four, oops, should put a little line there. Oops, sorry. Is three and 120 divided by four is equal to 30. That power 10 found his way over there on the end. I love patterns. I love patterns. Patterns are just cool. Patterns, patterns. We kind of say patterns with a D sound, but it does have two T's, patterns. So Dustin can pack how many? Well, we're gonna have to say 30 boxes. Okay, let's look at example two. Divide, 1200 divided by four which is 1,200. It says identify the basic fact. Well, we still have our 12 in there. I can see it. There's my 12. There's my four, which everybody knows is three. Okay. Now it says use place value. Again, we have 1,200 is equal to how many hundreds? I can see where that'd be really challenging. But look at, we already have over here 1,000. Now 1,000, because it's all based on a power of 10, if you remember from an earlier chapter we learned, 1,000 is equal to 10 hundreds. So if you take 10 hundreds together, you get to make a thousand. We also happen to have two hundreds in the problem. Remember? Yeah, we did this the last time. So now we're end up again with 12 hundreds. And you may have recall, you say, Mr. Wara, I heard you when you said the number up above 1200. Yeah, because that is actually another way that you can say that. You can say 1200. And that's what we have, 12 hundreds. 1,200 or 12 hundreds? Either way. Now, step three, divide. 12 hundreds divided by four is going to equal three hundreds. And again, it says, think four times three hundreds is equal to 12 hundreds. That's so true. Oh my goodness, they put this little sound symbol guy in our blank. Get out of there. What are you doing? That's our space. Now I gotta squeeze my number in there. And lucky it's only one digit because three, oh, I'm sorry, it is not one digit. Three hundreds? I have to sneak in 300. Oh no. Yeah, you completely, you encroached on our space. Okay, Whew. next time.
You're out of there. All right. Mr. Wara, calm down. Your blood pressure is rising. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Okay, relax. Think of how happy thoughts. Mm, okay, Kermit the Frog in the park. Okay, just kidding. Now, 1,200 divided by 4 equals 300. And I believe that is another pattern. Look at that. Carried on right over there. Hmm, interesting. Oh, now it says describe the pattern in the place value of the dividends and the quotients. <laughs> they did highlight it blue, made it kind of obvious for me to see. But yes, I do notice a pattern that the two zeros were just simply added on. I did my simple facts, 12 divided by 4, which was 3, and then I just moved on my 2. That works as long as there isn't any powers of 10 here. That could change that. Anyway, it does say explain how to use a basic fact and place value to divide 4,000 divided by 5. Okay, well, you know what? The first thing I'm thinking is how to use the basic fact. Well, the basic fact is 40 divided by 5. Okay, because this is our basic fact right here. And so 4,000 is really just 40 hundreds. And 40 hundreds divided by 5 is just going to equal 8 hundreds. So, 4,000 divided by 5 is going to equal 8 hundreds, or obviously we would write it this way, 800. And sometimes I can always check my work. I can go back and say, well, what's 800? That's my quotient. Multiply that by the divisor, which is 5. And you're going to see our little inverse operation brings us right back to 40 when I do my simple facts. And then I have two powers of 10. And there, voila, 4,000. How exciting. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Now, time to move on to the next page. Ooh, it's Sharon Show. That's right. Hey, everybody. Get your math board. Get your math board. That's it. Math board. Math board. Okay. Sometimes I think I'm at the baseball game, and I'm like selling popcorn. Get your popcorn. Okay. Divide 2,800 divided by 7. What basic fact can you use? Okay. I think I can do that. 28 and 7. Clearly, these are just two powers of 10. That's 100 right there, okay? That's the value of having those two place values, having a zero in that digit, is that it's 100. And you could say that it's 100 times 28, because that's what it is. So the basic fact is basically 28 divided by 7. That's the basic fact. So 2800 is equal to 28, you guessed it, hundreds. Because how many zeros do we have? Two. 2800s divided by 7 is going to equal four hundreds. Ooh, I like this lesson. I like this lesson because you know what? It's really teaching us place value, helping us really understand how hundreds is related to thousands and so forth and tens. Very nice. So then that must mean that 2,800 divided by seven is going to be equal, that's right, to 400. And if you ever doubt yourself, which can happen, I doubt myself all the time, I could always do the inverse operation. I could always say, okay, here's my quotient, here's my divisor. If I multiply those two together, will it get me back? To my 2,800. And you know what? It will. Just the way you can check your work. I would always make sure you try to understand this concept first. Next we have divide 280 divided by 7. See? Simple fact. You can see it right there. I keep saying simple fact. They call it basic fact. Okay. Same thing. You say tomato. I say tomato. You say potato. I say potato. Uh, what? Oh. oh. The singing's not cool. Okay. Sorry. 280 is equal to? To 28 tens. Yeah, trying to sneak that one by me because we only had one power of 10 right there. 28 tens divided by, oh, I could have looked down and cheated. Oops, I didn't know. 28 tens divided by, what, seven? Yes, I think seven is what we're using. Seven then is going to equal four tens. So then finally, 200, blah, 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 280 divided by seven is going to equal 40 because 40 is equal to four tens. Assuming I did this one right, oh, the perfect arrow. Uh, oh, take a picture. Okay, really, Mr. War. Yeah, I know. Tell me about it. Bring it on down. Let's go down, down, down. Okay, here we go. Next section says use basic facts and place value to find the quotient. Yeah, I like it. We're moving on. 36 divided by 6 is 6. However, 6 times 6 is not equal to 360, so we actually have 6 tens. Uh -huh. See that? I huh. thought you were going to get me on that one. 20 divided by 5 is 4. However, when you bring these together, it doesn't work. We have 400. Ooh, how do I know that? 
Well, the 20 is used up here, right there, see? So we actually only have 100 there. We don't have that third zero. So some of you might want to try to sneak on an extra zero there going, oh, I just knew. Certain numbers like five times four because it ends in a zero. This is what makes these kind a little bit more challenging. In fact, would it be, yeah, any number that actually is multiplied by uh, a five, every other one could end up that way. Seven times five is 35, does not. Um, but if you had five times six, that would also be the same thing, same pattern. Five times six, you end up with that zero on the end. So you just have to be careful. All I can say is be alert. Always be alert. Okay, yes, the great advice from Mr. Wara. Yeah, right. 45 divided by nine. Okay, it's five. I know that because nine times five is 45. And look at 100. Bingo. I always like to check. This is just me. I do my basic fact again. 45 plus two zeros, yes. Because I got to be honest with you. Math, this is why math is so beautiful. Because when you're taking the test, you can say to yourself, Okay, I don't know what your name is. You can put your name in. I. You can say, you know, I just need to check my work. And then I can get 100% on the test. That's right. You just go back and you check your work. It's like, bingo, 100%, straight A. And then you get to laugh all the way home. Be super happy all the way home. Maybe you get something good by your parents. Woohoo! Back to the program. It says, use basic facts and place value to find the quotient. I'm going to try to do that. Basic facts, place value to find the quotient. Okay, I'm focusing on all these things. Basic facts and the place value to find the quotient. Okay, notice how I did that. It's helping me remember it even better when I repeat it. Maybe that's a good strategy. You should try that. You're struggling in math? Just kind of keep repeating it over so you can get a better understanding. Basic fact is this here, the 56 divided by 8, which I know is 7. But I also know that I have, yeah, 56 tens. So that means I have one more zero here I have to put on. 56. Now I got that. Works out just beautifully. Oop, there's that 25 again. It's that tricky one. Only one zero. Don't add on two because the 20 was kind of already used. You know what you should do? I would put the video on pause. I'm serious. I know. You want to kind of hear me keep talking? No? Okay, you don't. Okay, good. More of a reason. Put the video on pause. Just freeze it for a second. And then I'll do all these words. See, I'll answer them all. And then you just click it back on and see if you got them. Okay? Because I'm going to go super fast on these now. All right? Okay, how'd you guys do? Pretty good? I told you I was going to do them fast. <laughs> no, I edited it. I was going so slow. I think I saw a turtle pass me by. Okay, so, you know, it's okay. Anyways, mathematical practice five is all about, like, looking at patterns, using patterns that you see in math. Algebra. Whoa, sounds scary. Okay, but algebra is about finding the unknown number. And you can see it's right here. Unknown number. There you go. Perfect. Arrow. See, now, like, I had it under control. You didn't have to move in. That was kind of like my little area. You just pop in like that, you know? You should ask permission. All right, I don't know. It's just how it happens sometimes, you know? Everybody's fighting to get their little spot in the limelight. Anyway, so we have 420 divided by something equals 60. Well, I know my basic fact is a 7. So it seems like a 7 would go there. But here's the problem. If I say 420 divided by 7 equals 60, that may be true. But I need to check my quotient. And I'm looking at it going, yeah, well, 42, that would be true. And since I do have 42 tens, 42 tens divided by 7 tens is equal to like 6 tens. And 6 tens, yeah, that's 60. What am I supposed to put in here? I'm supposed to put my 7 over there? You mean I did it wrong? Really? I didn't know. I mean, it's, it's a gray box. I thought it was supposed to go there. How was I supposed to know? Okay. All right. Mr. Wall, calm, calm. Okay. Blank divided by 4 equals 30. Ooh, that one's not very friendly, is it? Oh, wait, it is. Ooh, that's unusual. Oh, because I don't have the first number. I don't have the dividend. I have the divisor. Hello. And I have the uh, quotient. Hello. Okay, so I have two red dots. They're showing me the quotient and the divisor. I need the dividend. So it's just like I need to do the inverse operation to figure out what goes there. So something divided by 4 equals 30. So then 30 times 4 equals, yeah, 120. Yes. Now, you can look at your simple facts and say 12, yep, divided by 4, that's 3. Okay, you can see that's there. Now, please remember, it's 120, not 120. We talked about that. Now, we have our, again, basic fact, which is a 9. And that's all it's going to be there, 9. Oops, sorry, I did it again. Mr. Wara, you don't ever learn. I don't. Sometimes I don't. I'm very hard-headed. Okay, so 9 times 90, 81. Okay, that looks good. Looks good. Okay, think smarter. We rarely get these on the first two pages of the lesson, but it says think smarter. Divide. Okay, 400 divided by 40. Explain how patterns and place value can help. So I know that 400 uh, divided by 40 is equal to 10. You might be able to see that because 40 times 10 is 400. So, I don't know, maybe you look at it this way. 
maybe you say like, well, 400 divided by just four, okay, is going to be equal to 100. So 400 divided by 40, then it's just gonna be 10. It's gonna be like one tenth the value. Might just be a pattern that you see. I don't know, maybe this makes more sense here because if you're dividing 400, and like we were learning in this lesson, 400 divided by four tens means that the quotient will be decreased by that same multiple of 10. From four tens to 40 to 400, this is all just a power of 10. I have to be honest with you, with the way that we did this in school, now this is in common core, please keep in mind, but how we would always know what to do in situations like this, when we had 400 divided by 40, we would just know that to know how many zeros you had, you would just cross out one zero in the dividend and one in the divisor. And then that would let you know that that one's gonna come over here. And it does work every time, but it doesn't really teach you anything. The four divided by four is one. And so here's your one right here. Okay, and this would work on you know any problem, even if you had like 86,000, don't ask me why I chose that one, divided by, what's the number that'll go into? 86, let's scratch that. Let's make this 88, make this really easy. Divided by 110. See here, the 88 and 11, that makes a basic fact, which is equal to eight, because eight times 11 is 88. But we have three zeros here, but we have one here. So you cross one out, and then you add two, because that's what we have. Now, is that true? Is 11, I mean, 110 times 800 going to give you that same amount? Zero, 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 eight, eight, 88,000. It does. Okay, oh my goodness, I hear the music. It must mean it's time. It is, it's time to say hasta la vista. No, it's not, Mr. Huh? I know. It's time to say live long and prosper.